All right, everybody, get your King James Bible, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, and John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, this is actually not about Saul, but uh, it's more about David, King David. Future King David. He's getting ready to be king, crowned king soon. But he's not there yet. So the last study, the Philistines did not want David uh, around when they were getting ready to fight Israel. So they had him go back home to where he was staying with Ziklag, the city. And... The Amalekites, the descendants of the grandson of Esau, Edom, had attacked Ziklag, burned it with fire, stolen everything, and taken the women and children captive. I wonder if somebody was watching the city because they knew that there was going to be a battle and, you know, all the men took off to go to the battle. And then they're like, oh, well, all the men are gone, so let's attack the city now. I don't know. But the Amalekites were Esau Edom's... Uh, he, Amalek was Esau Edom's grandson. And the Amalekites were bad news bears. They attacked Israel when they came out of Egypt. They attacked the rear. God does not like Amalek. Matter of fact, the Bible says that uh, the Lord's going to have war with Amalek from generation to generation. I covered that on a previous study in this series. So uh, i tell you what, all these people that say, oh, anybody can be saved. Well, you know what? Read your Bible. And the Bible doesn't start in Matthew. The Bible starts in Genesis, okay? I mean, you know, people actually want me to believe that Cain could have been saved. I don't think so. God rejected Esau, rejected him. Matter of fact, Malachi 1 says God hated Esau. I think it's in the book of Romans, too, where Paul uh, reaffirms, repeats what it says in Malachi. You know, it's just, it's amazing. Well, you know what? It's, people don't have any Bible knowledge at all, virtually. Virtually none. You know, I've never really liked television. So instead of spending time watching television, when I, when the Lord uh, tried to get me out of the cesspool of the world, and boy, I'll tell you what, he had to go through some really hard lengths to get that done. But finally, uh, finally he got it done. But the deal is, I spent time researching as much as I could. I mean, I'm not saying I'm right about everything, but uh, when you know who the players are in the Bible, it makes sense. So let's read about... So David and his men, his 600 people, left Ziklag to go to war. City was undefended. The Amalekites attacked the city when they were gone, and then they come back. It's a smoldering ruin, and all the women and children are gone. That is the stage set. So let's read 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 1. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either small or great, but carried them away and went on their way. 
So evidently, uh, they're doing uh, human trafficking. So David and his men came to the city. And behold, it was burned with fire, and their, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. Now, I, I'm going to take a wild guess here. Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, I don't know much about her. I don't remember much about her, but I'm wondering if she was the virgin wife of David. But Abigail, she was a widow. So that's kind of my guess. You'll, uh, I'll cover more on that soon. So let's get going. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. What? You know, it wasn't David's fault. David didn't do this. Because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, he said, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired, at the Lord saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he, the Lord, and he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the six hundred men that were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. Now remember, they had just traveled for three days, and then they come home, and instead of getting rest, uh, they go on another journey. So here it is, they get to the brook, and, uh, well, let's read the next verse. Uh, so David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 men, uh, for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. Uh, my dad, a World War II combat veteran, told me that uh, when they were in the military, you took the biggest guy you could find and you handed him the heavy machine gun. Yeah, the biggest guy you could find. You don't give it to the little guy. You give it to the big guy. And Dad was telling me that uh, the big guy was like 30, in his 30s, probably young 30s. I don't know. But he was stronger, but he didn't have the stamina that, you know, Dad was like 16 years old when he joined the military. You know, you get a 16, 17, 18-year-old, it's just a bundle of energy compared to a 30-something-year-old, you know. Even though the 30-year-old's stronger, he doesn't have the stamina. He can't keep up for the length of time. So that's what I'm suspecting. I'm su suspecting that 200 of these guys were old folks. Maybe not as old as me, but, uh, you know, older folks. And they had just done a, you know, three-day journey to go back home, and now they're running off again they're probably exhausted so david's going to take his um uh, 400 leave the 200 behind so keep that in mind all right so david goes with his 400 verse 11 and they found an egyptian in the field and brought him to david and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water and they gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water for three days and three nights. 
Let me tell you something, people. You don't drink any water for three days, three nights. You're on the verge of death. I mean, you know, you go four days, three, four days without water, you're going to die, especially if you're out in the desert. So here it is. They find this guy. They show him some kindness. So what happens next? Verse 13. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou, and whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite, and my master left me because three days agone I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of the Cherethites, and upon the coast which belongeth to Judah, and upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? So, you know, uh, you guys came here. Do you know where they're going? You know, do you know where they're going to be at? And, you know, obviously they, they're going to probably go back the same way that they came up, right? So this guy has knowledge. Hey, where are these people? Oh, I can tell you. And David said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. You know, don't kill me and don't give me back to the Amalekites, and I'll take you to them. No problem. That's the Bob translation. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight, even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men, which rode upon camels and fled. And David rescued all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. Remember, his two wives were taken captive, and he rescued his two wives. We're going to take a look at that, so keep that in mind. Verse 19, And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. And David took all the flocks and the herds which they drave before those other cattle and said this is David's spoil you know the booty it's our treasure and David took all the flocks and the herds which they drave before those other cattle and said this is David's spoil and David came to the 200 men which were so faint that they could not follow David whom they had made also to abide at the brook Bresor and they went forth to meet David and to meet the people that were with him. And when David came near to the people, he saluted them. You know, hey, everybody, how's it going? Then answered all the wicked men and men of Belial, of those that went with David and said, because they went not with us, we will not give them aught of the spoil that we have recovered, save to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. You know, they're saying, oh, well, these guys didn't go with us, so we're not going to give them. Uh, they can take their families and that it. That's it. Everything else is ours. Then said David, ye shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord hath given us, who hath preserved us and delivered the company which came against us into our hand. No way, dude. The Lord gave us the victory. We're going to share. Verse 24, for who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarrieth by the stuff, they shall part alike. And it was so from that day forward that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. And when David came to Ziklag, he sent to the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. 
So not only had they recovered uh, their cattle, but they took the Amalekites' cattle too and uh, livestock. You know, they, they took it all. If they had extra jewelry, if they had extra gold, silver, it was all David's and his men, right? So they sent a present. Verse 27. To them that were in Bethel. Uh, Beth means house and El is a contraction for God. Bethel means house of God, believe it or not. To them which were in Bethel and to them which were in South Ramoth and to them which were in Jatir. So David's sending uh, gifts to them. 28. And to them which were in Ar Or, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and to them which were in Sifmoth, and to them which were in Eshtemoah, I guess, and to them which were in Ra Rachel, and to them which were in the cities of the Jeremelites, and to them which were in the cities of the Kenites, and to them which were in Hormah, and to them which were in Chorashah, and to them which were in At. Hach, and to them which were in Hebron, and to all the places where David himself and his men were wont to haunt. To haunt. Isn't that interesting? Uh, you know, uh, a haunt is like a place to dwell, right? They always say, oh, that, that, that castle's haunted with spirits, you know, ghosts. But it doesn't always necessarily mean evil spirits. All right, what does haunt mean? Webster, Noah Webster, 1828 Dictionary. The more I read it, the more I have an appreciation for this language scholar called Noah Webster. Verb, transitive, to frequent, to frequent, to resort to much or often, or to be much about, to visit customarily. Um, to come too frequently, to intrude on, or uh, to trouble with frequent visits. Um, let's see. It is particularly applied to specters or apparitions, you know, ghosts, right? Which are represented by the fear uh, and credulity as frequenting or inhabiting old, decayed, and deserted houses. Foul spirits haunt my resting place. Uh, so, you know, to visit a place, to resort. Um, so, yeah. All right. Now remember, David had two wives. The one was a widow. The other one, I don't know. I mean, she could have been a virgin. I, be honest with you, I'm, it's just, I don't know. But just remember, David had two wives. Uh, somebody sent me this. You know who you are. Ezekiel chapter 23. I was thinking along these lines before they sent me this, but uh, this is uh, kind of, uh, it's out there, but we'll take a look. Verse 1, The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. Israel and Judah? Hmm. And they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts pressed, and there they bruised the teats of their virginity. And the names of them were Ahola the elder, and Aholabah her sister, and they were mine. And they bare sons and daughters, thus were their names. Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem is Aholabah. Now remember, Samaria was the capital of Israel when they split from Judah. Samaria was the capital of Israel. And Judah was the 
Uh, Jerusalem was the capital of Judah. And Ahola played the harlot when she was mine, and she daughtered on her lovers, on the Assyrians her neighbors, which were clothed with blue. Captains and rulers, all of them desirable, young men, horsemen riding upon horses. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, with all them that were the chosen men of Assyria, and all on whom she dotted, with all their idols she defiled herself. Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt, for in her youth they lay with her, and they bruised the breasts of her virginity, and poured their whoredom upon her. Wherefore I have delivered her into the hands of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, upon whom she dotted. Uh, remember, Assyria carried away Israel, northern Israel, captive. Carried them away. Slavery. Says, yeah, you want to play with uh, these people? I'll, you can have them. That's what the Lord said. Read Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 8. Oh, yeah. Verse 10. These discovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters and slew her with the sword, and she became famous among women, for they had executed judgment upon her. Oh, yeah. Anybody that wasn't good for slavery, they killed. Uh, they killed the old. They killed the soldier. Uh, you know, they killed them. And then the ones they didn't kill, they took into slavery. The Assyrians were bad people. Really bad. Verse 11, and when her sister Aholabah saw this, she was more corrupt in her inordinate love than she. You know, Israel was bad, went into captivity, but Jerusalem saw all this and was even worse. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. Why? Because of a promise that the Lord had made to David that there would always be a man to sit upon the throne and in Judah. So, and when her sister Aholabah saw this, she was more corrupt in her inordinate love than she, and in her whoredoms more than her sister in her whoredoms. She doted upon the Assyrians, her neighbors, captains, and rulers, clothed most gorgeously, horsemen riding upon horses, all of them desirable young men. Then I saw that she was defiled, that they took both one way. Now remember, Assyria not only took Israel captive, they took a large chunk of Judah captive too. They tried to take Jerusalem but the Lord defended Jerusalem. Um, I forget how many. I forget how many thousands of. It was over a hundred thousand um, soldiers that the Lord struck dead when they were besieging Jerusalem. I think it was one hundred eighty-five thousand, if I remember correctly. I mean that is a, that is a significant army. But they had taken many of the towns of Judah captive. Assyria did. But then, over a hundred and something years later, Jerusalem was taken by the Babylonians, who conquered not only Jerusalem, but also conquered the Assyrians. And Judah, part of Judah, and Israel fled. When the Assyrian Empire collapsed, they ran. They said, I don't want to be... I don't want to be slaves to these people. Hey, we got a chance to escape. There's no soldiers here holding us back. Let's get the heck out of Dodge. And they did. And according to history, they went north. And if you look north on the um, map, what's north of Israel and, and Assyria? Europe. 
They went through the Caucasus Mountains. And guess what? That's where the name Caucasian comes from. Yeah. They got the heck out of Dodge. And they went north. Yeah. Verse 14. And that she increased her whoredoms. Now we're talking about Judah here. For when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, girded with girdles upon their loins, exceeding in dyed attire upon their heads, all of them princes to look to after the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity. Now the Chaldeans and the Babylonians are similar people. I don't know if they're exactly the same, but Babylon and Chaldea are... I think they're like sister areas. I, I'm not exactly 100% sure. But the, the Chaldeans and the Babylonians are related people. So, verse 16. And as soon as she saw them with her eyes, she darted upon them and sent messengers unto them into Chaldea. And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love and they defiled her with their whoredom and she polluted with them and her mind was alienated from them well guess what people do you know where the uh the uh tradition of the elders that jesus condemned came from babylon matter of fact the towel Mud is called the Babylonian Tal Mud. Tal Mud means learning. So Babylonian learning, learning from Babylon. Where did they get all this stuff? Babylon. Where do you think the Tower of Babel was or Babel? Babylon. That's where it all comes from. Yeah. So she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness. Then my mind was alienated from her, like as my mind was alienated from her sister. Verse 19. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms and calling to remembrance the days of her youth, wherein she had played the harlot, in the land of Egypt. For she dotted upon their paramours, whose flesh is as the flesh of asses, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. I'm not going to do a commentary on that. But, uh, <laughs> never mind. Uh, Never mind. I'm I'm not going to go there. Thus thou callest to remembrance the lewdness of thy youth in bruising thy teats by the Egyptians for the paps of thy youth. Therefore, O Aholaba, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will raise up thy lovers against thee from whom thy mind is alienated, and I will bring them against thee on every side. The Babylonians and all the Chaldeans, Pekod and Shoah and Koah and all the Assyrians with them. All of them desirable young men, captains and rulers, great lords and renowned, all of them riding upon horses. And they shall come against thee with chariots, wagons and wheels and with an assembly of people which shall set against thee buckler and shield and helmet round about. And I will set judgment before them, and they shall judge thee according to their judgments. And I will set my jealousy against thee, and they shall deal furiously with thee. They shall take away thy nose and thine ears, and thy remnant shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by the, the fire. Wow. 
They shall also strip thee out of thy clothes and take away thy fair jewels. Thus will I make thy lewdness to cease from thee and thy whoredoms brought from the land of Egypt so that thou shalt not lift up thine eyes up unto them nor remember Egypt any more. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them from whom thy mind is alienated. People, that's what's getting ready to happen to America and Europe. God's delivering us from into the hands of those who hate us. Why? Because we've turned our back on him. Verse 29, And they shall deal with thee hatefully, and shall take away all thy labor, and shall leave thee naked and bare, and the nakedness of thy whoredom shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. I will do these things unto thee, because thou hast gone a whoring. Why am I going to do this? Why? I will do these things unto thee, because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen. And because thou art polluted with their idols, thou hast walked in the way of thy sister. Therefore will I give her cup into thine hand. Thus saith the Lord God, thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup, deep and large. Remember in the book of Revelation, it talks about the cup of the wrath of the Lord. That's what we're talking about here. Thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup, deep and large. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn and had in derision. It containeth much. Thou shalt be filled with drunkenness and sorrow for the cup of astonishment and desolation with the cup of thy sister Samaria. Remember when Jesus asked uh, the God the Father, that the cup may pass from me. The cup of judgment, people. Thou shall be filled with drunkenness and sorrow with the cup of astonishment and desolation with the cup of thy sister Samaria. Thou shalt even drink it and suck it out and thou shalt break the sherds thereof and pluck off thine own breast for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast forgotten me and cast me behind thy back, therefore bear thou also thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. The Lord said moreover unto me, Son of man, wilt thou judge Ahola and Ahola Labah? Yea, declare unto them their abominations. They have committed adultery, and blood is in their hands, and with their idols they have committed adultery, and have also caused their sons whom they bear unto me to pass for them through the fire to devour them. Now remember, they, uh, David's wives were taken captives, right? And burned, the city was burned with fire. Is there a parallel here? I think so. We'll get to that. Moreover, this have they done unto me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbaths. For when they had slain their children to their idols, they sacrificed people, their own children, to devil's people. Think about that. Planned Parenthood, anybody? For when they had slain their children to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. Oh yeah, in the morning they, they killed their children to the devil and then in the same day they went to the Lord's house and said, Bless me, dear Lord. You know, I wonder how many satanic rituals are done at Planned Parenthood before they open every day. I wonder. It's too bad I'm not in charge. I'd tell you what, I'd I'd make King Josiah look like an amateur. Uh, <laughs> King Josiah Let's just say he uh, he had a solution for San Francisco. Yeah. For when they had slain their children to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. And thus, and lo, thus have they done in the midst of mine house. And furthermore, 
that ye have sent for men to come from afar, unto whom a messenger was sent, and lo, they came, for whom thou didst wash thyself, paintest thy eyes, make up, did the, the whore of Israel, did they, they painted their eyes, they put uh, eye, eye shadow on, you know, and decked thyself with ornaments. Oh yeah, they put on the fancy jewelry and, you know, and they did their makeup and they got their hair done. Verse 41, and satest upon a stately bed and a table prepared before it, whereupon thou hast set mine incense and mine oil. And a voice of a multitude being at ease was with her and with the men of the common sort, which brought Sabaeans from the wilderness, which put bracelets upon their hands and beautiful crowns upon their heads. Then said I unto her that was old in adulteries, Will they now commit whoredoms with her and she with them? Yet they went in unto her, as they go in unto a woman that playeth the harlot. That playeth the harlot. That's just a king's English way of saying a whore, people. So went they into Ahola and unto Aholabiah, the lewd women. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses and after the manner of women that shed blood because they are adulteresses and blood is in their hands. They're murderers, people. They murder their own children. Verse 46, For thus saith the Lord God, I will bring up a company upon them and will give them to be removed and spoiled. And the company shall stone them with stones and dispatch them with their swords. They shall slay their sons and their daughters and burn up their houses with fire. Thus will I cause lewdness to cease out of the land that all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness. And they shall recompense you. They shall give you payback. And they shall recompense your lewdness upon you. And ye shall bear the sins of your idols. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Now what has this got to do with David's two wives. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to give it a shot here. The one wife was the wife of Naboth. Nabal, he was, she was a widow. Well, guess what? Israel was a widow. God divorced her in Jeremiah 3.8. The other woman... Uh, I don't know too much about her, but could she be representative of Judah? And they were sent into captivity. And then who went to rescue them? King David, of which Christ was a descendant of the flesh. Is that kind of representative of what Jesus Christ did? He went and rescued Israel and Judah? To bring us back to the Father? I think so. Possibly. Think about it. You know, possibly. So, is King David sort of kind of a type of Christ rescuing the two daughters? The two sisters, rather. The two sisters, Israel and Judah? I don't know. You decide. But, um, I don't know. There's a lot of parallels between Christ and David. And I have an entire playlist on it. So, if you're interested, you can take a look at uh, King David, A Type of Christ playlist. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.